Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to all our Guru Maharajas, and all glories to your Lotus Feet Maharaj. So devotees will proceed to our next session, which is, um, we will proceed, we will continue from our Canto 5, Chapter 17, Verse Number 20. Maharaj, whenever you're ready, you may take the call over and enlighten us. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Mataji, Indulek yes. Mataji, continue from here yesterday. Is this the correct verse? No, no. It's 5.17.20, right, Mataji? No. 10 and 11, yes, what where we stopped yesterday, Mataji? On the nineteenth verse, Mataji. On oh, nineteenth. Yeah. One second. Mm -hmm. mm. So. Yesterday, Maharaj was talking about the anger and uh, Lord Shiva. So, this was the purpose that Maharaj covered. Do you want me to go further up? Shama Gauri Mataji? Yeah, let's continue, Mataji. Okay. Is that okay, Maharaj? Shall we go start from 20? Whatever you tell me, I don't really know. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I'm just following your instructions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, till yesterday we covered 19, so today we are. Okay, thank you. Okay. okay. Hare Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Asadrasoya Pratibhati Mayayam Shive Vishiveva Mara Sava Tamra Lokchanaha Nadagu Vadhyor Hana Ishwara Hriya Yarpadeho Sparsana Darshatendriya Uh, translations for persons with impure vision, the Supreme Lord's eyes appear like those of someone who indiscriminately drinks intoxicating beverages. Thus bewildered, such intelligent persons become angry at the Supreme Lord, and due to their angry mood, the Lord himself appears angry and very fearful. However, this is an illusion. When the wives of the serpent demons were agitated by the touch of the Lord's lotus feet due to shyness, they couldn't, they could proceed no farther in their worship of him. Yet the Lord remained unagitated by their touch, for he is equipoised in all circumstances. Therefore, who will not worship the supreme personality of Godhead? Anyone who remains unagitated, even in the presence or cause of agitation, is called dira or equipoised. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, being always in a transcendental position, is never agitated by anything. Therefore, someone who wants to become dira must take shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Dira Sutra Namuyanti. A person who is equipped in all circumstances is never bewildered. The Lord Maharaj is a perfect example of Adira. When the fierce form of Nishringadeva appeared in order to kill Harani Kashipu, 
Allowed was unagitated. He remained calm and quiet, whereas others, including even Lord Rama, were frightened of the features of the Lord. Omagyanti Mirandasya Girajana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yenatas May Shri Gurve Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasnaya Bhutalaya Shri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gorvani Pachari Ne Never Say Sasun Yavari Pastyat Yade Satari Ne Panchakalpa Tarubas Cha Vip Sindhu Paye Cha Patita Nam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Tahu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadada Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Rinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. So we would uh, request the devotees to turn on their... Okay, we're going to keep the verse up. All right, we'll keep the verse up. Um, so, yeah. Uh, one of the uh, qualities of uh, a Vaishnava is Dira. In the song of the uh, Sad Goswami Astikam, you hear um, Dira Dira Jano Priyo Priya Karo, that the, uh, they are uh, friendly and uh, neutral to the Dira and Andira. So there's a class of people called Diras. And they're not moved by happiness and distress. They're not moved by changing of circumstances. They remain fixed in their consciousness. Now this is something one has to practice. And the way one can develop this Dira, as it says here, one must take shelter of the lotus feet of the source of all power, Krishna himself. He is always in a position of remaining undisturbed by material energy. Those who think wrongly, as it says here, someone sees the eyes of the Lord and thinks that he is intoxicated. They are simply reflecting their own uh, image upon the Lord or their own understanding on the Lord. The Lord is transcendental to all material situations. One, how is it possible that the Lord can be affected by the changing of the material energy when it's when it's his devotees who come to take shelter of him to be free from the effects of the material energy? So it's not possible. He's giving shelter for those who are agitated by material energy. So how is it possible that he could be agitated or disturbed by the changing features of the material energy? It's not possible. And he also creates the material energy. So he's not controlled by the cre his own creation. So he always remains Dira, even though he had 16,108 wives, who was not attached to any of them. But in the spirit of loving relationships, he interacted them with them as their intimate wives. But, and we see an example of, when Krishna was at the Rasa dance with Radharani and all of the gopis, at one point he left everybody and just left. And everyone was wondering, where did Krishna go? And of course, Radharani and the gopis in a separate um, group, Radharani went alone. The other, the, the other devotees came afterwards. Actually, it's a little different. What actually happened is Radharani left the, the Rasa dance first, and then Krishna went after her. He caught her, caught up with her, but then when he was with her. She was very feeling very 
a little, not very, but she was feeling a little proud that Krishna favored her. And in that pride, Krishna left, and she was left without association with Krishna. But Krishna, you can show that he is not attached to anything. He is simply, he is Atmarama, he's self-contained. He needs nothing outside of himself, but still he interacts with his devotees in loving relationships. You see that also in, the, in this world today, you see persons who are not disturbed, even in a material sense, you'll see certain persons that they are not disturbed by material situations. Like uh, military people, they train themselves very strongly and through their own experience, they're not disturbed what happens on the battlefield. They remain fixed in their service or their activities on the battlefield and do not become disturbed what's happening to them or around them, they remain fixed in their fighting spirit. So you'll see um, uh, there are persons who are like that. Prabhupada tells the story of, of uh, Stalin, the very vicious dictator in, in Russia many, many, almost a hundred years ago. Um, he had to have an operation, a very severe operation. And uh, he refused to take an anesthesia for the operation. He wanted to watch the operation. <laughs> and uh, he did. And he was not disturbed by what was happening to him during the operation. So you find that there are even people in the material world who have these strong minds where they're not disturbed by the happiness and distress. And devotees can achieve that, as it says here, by taking shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord. Uh, we have the example of Prahlad Maharaj. Not only was he not disturbed when Lord Nisringadev came, and in his fierce form to kill his father, he was not disturbed even at the time when his father was trying to kill him in different ways. He remembered, he remained fixed on the lotus feet of the Lord in devotion. So one has to practice both the principles of devotional service, that is hearing and chanting and remembering the Lord, and at the same time practice becoming free from the turbulences in the material world. One who becomes affected by happiness and distress cannot execute devotional service properly, nor effectively. Um, it's compared to a leaf. A leaf, when the wind blows, when the wind blows, the leaf will be picked up in the air and will go in the direction of the wind. And the wind may stop, it'll fall in a certain place. And then another wind will come and pick it up again. So being affected by the changing attitude is like being in the leaf of a wind. Uh, when uh, when uh, Sri Vastakor's son died during the kirtan in the house, in his house, in the evening when Lord Chaitanya was there, Although the family members were overwhelmed with grief, he remained undisturbed by that simply because he was fixed on Lord, pleasing Lord Chaitanya and not disturbing Lord Chaitanya's kirtan. When Lord Chaitanya found out about seven and a half hours later that Srivast Thakur's son had died, he, he asked, why didn't you tell me? Shiva said, I didn't want to disturb your kirtan. And Lord Chaitanya was so pleased to see how he was so unaffected by the death of a, a loved one, his son, that um, the Lord actually started to glorify Srivas in so many different ways. Of course, he was also glorifying him because he was fixed on his service to the Lord. So one who comes and becomes absorbed in his service to the Lord becomes fixed on that service is not 
disturbed by the changing of the circumstances. Happiness, distress, heat, cold, honor and dishonor, uh, winter and summer seasons, which affect Marta Sparsis to Kunteya, Sitnosna Sukadukada, Agapayino Nitya Tamsti Tikshuva Bharata. So Dira is very much related to the principle of tolerance. But one who is tolerant sometimes is experiencing the difficulties that are occurring. One who is dira, they're above those difficulties and they, um, that's not the verse, it's actually 214. If you want the actual verse, I quote it. It's, it's the next verse down, down the page. If you go to it, it's 214, yeah. That's the verse. Um, uh, and uh, so one must learn to tolerate them without being disturbed. So uh, happiness and distress, according to material calculations, are constantly coming in this world. In fact, they come regularly, every day, every minute sometimes. Things change. One minute everything is nice, the next minute there is turbulence. One minute everything is turbulent, the next minute it is all gone. The material energy is called mutable. And so the conditioned souls are always trying to adjust the arrangements of the material energy not to become affected by these things. And not, well, not to become, no, not to become affected, but, but not to be, to find ways to avoid them. But the devotees know that one cannot avoid the, happy, the, the, the changings of the material energy. They work under higher powers. And therefore, one has to learn to be fixed in Krishna consciousness and not be disturbed by these things. Um, and that is a very uh, important part in execution devotional service. If we don't come to this stage of learning how to become dira, we can't make it in Krishna consciousness. We will fall away because we are moved by the changing tides. For instance, we all have to leave this body so at the time of death, you have to fix your mind at the, at the lotus feet of the Lord. If you're disturbed by the, by the pains and that are coming by uh, the, the diminishing of the body, then it becomes very hard to actually focus your concentration on the Lord. So one has to learn to, to somehow or other practice this dira before that time of death comes, because if we're not ready and we still, we're still fighting to keep the body in good conditions at the time of death, then we'll be again forced to take another birth in this material world. But one who can absorb himself in Krishna at the time of death, and that's not easy, depending on how that death appears. Sometimes it appears very painful and sometimes it becomes just like a, a uh, it just becomes just like a changing from one room to another. So one has to practice this jira, equipoise, and it's one of the qualities of a Vaishnava who is engaged in devotional service. And for Lad Maharaj, we have Haridas Thakur, he was also very dira. When he was being beaten in 22 marketplaces, he was completely absorbed in chanting of the holy name. And at the same time, not holding any negativity towards his torturers. In fact, he was praying for them to receive the mercy of the Lord. So um, you'll see there's many, many examples throughout the Shastras of great souls who remain dearer. We have Ranti Dev. Ranti Dev was a very uh, influential king. In his kingdom, he decided to perform some austerity by fasting for a whole year. Finally, the year was up and it was the day to break the fast. A big feast was cooked by his wife. He was ready to break the fast. And then uh, 
first the man with the pack of dogs came and they he said my me and my dogs are hungry can you give us some food and he did and then just before he was about to fast again uh, another person came and other there was even one animal that came looking for food finally he gave everything away <laughs> And all he was left with was with a glass of water. <laughs> he had nothing left. And then he was about to uh, drink the water. And then even then, and another one person came and said, I'm thirsty. And so Ranti Dave gave even the water away. He had nothing. <laughs> and uh, then all of those persons who came actually were demigods in disguise. They came to test him. And uh, they glorified him for his uh, for his generosity in showing compassion to others who were in need. And uh, he's glorified for that. The story of Ranti Dev is mentioned in the ninth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. It's very instructive. So there are so many examples in, in the Vedic literatures. Even in Bhagavatam, you find so many. So this dira, one has to practice that, uh, unagitated in any circumstance. And how we also get the power comes not only through the practice, but one has to also uh, take shelter. And this is the main thing to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the uh, shelter of all shelters. And therefore, one who's taking shelter of him can develop this detachment or dira in every in any circumstance. And this is one, this is the quality of a devotee, um, not moved by happiness and distress. <laughs> Someone <laughs> asked uh, Srila Prabhupada. Um, I forgot the question. I remember the answer, but I can't remember the question. Question was, uh, uh, oh yeah, how do you continue to preach in all of these circumstances? And he said, Prabhupada said, I'm not moved by these rascal scientists. <laughs> the scientists are saying so many things and people like to believe the scientists. Whatever goes on the news, we believe it. <laughs> but Prabhupada knows that these people are cheaters, they're liars, and they're all out to gain some, some remuneration, popularity, and they have no position to be authorities. So Prabhupada knew that, and therefore he was always speaking strongly against people in high positions who had no good qualities simply trying to cheat people and make up stories and lies and trying to get people to buy things they don't need. <laughs> but Prabhupada could see that. And uh, yeah, so he was very strong in delivering his message that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. You are the eternal servant of the Lord. This is the absolute truth. Anybody who says anything different has no knowledge and it's simply, uh, the word is, the word here is illusion, illusion, and there's the word called mumubu, mumubi. Uh, mumubi means one who is illusioned. Uh, to be under the influence of the material energy means to be illusioned. Therefore, anyone who's under the influence of the material energy will be illusioned. Um, and so those who have to take shelter of Krishna and hear from the words of the pure devotee spiritual master, and they get all the uh, complete understanding of, of what is actually the truth and how to benefit oneself by living a life in shelter and in service to the Supreme Personality of God. And Krishna consciousness means a complete transformation of one's consciousness from seeing myself as the center to seeing Krishna as the center. 
That's the complete transformation of consciousness. To see the material energy as simply something that one has to tolerate and deal with, but not, it cannot provide any support, peace, satisfaction, or any happiness. This all comes by way of execution of devotional service. And the movement of the material energy, and the material energy has three modes, of goodness, passion, and ignorance. And these modes are energies and they're very strong. And they're pushing the living entity to think and act in a certain way according to the association of that particular mode. So one has to learn to be transcendental to the modes by taking shelter of Krishna in devotion. As soon as we remember Krishna in devotion, we are free from the effects of the material energy. And to develop dhira, one has to practice that being fixed on Krishna in all circumstances. And then the devotee knows, whatever is happening by the material energy has nothing to do with me. It's simply the changing. Just like the summer comes and the summer leaves, we turn on the fans, the air conditioners, we complain about the heat, and then the winter comes and then we turn on the uh, the thermostats, we jump it up as high as we could to stay warm. We complain about the cold weather. Now, all of these movements of the material energy are there and they will always be there. So one, one who is affected by these things, of course, one should take precautions according to how best one can serve, but one is not disturbed. Just like, uh, you, know, you might say, well, why, why are things happening the way they are? Well, it's because this is the material world. Can't expect anything good to happen in the material world. It's like saying, why is it cold in the winter? Because it's winter. <laughs> the devotee is, yeah, has to take shelter of Krishna seriously by remembering krishna in devotion the easiest and best way to remember krishna is to chant his holy name and the chanting of the holy name is always available at any time any place in any circumstance one can simply chant Hare krishna and be free from the effects of the material energy <laughs> because when one is in touch with krishna through the chanting of the holy name one is no longer part of the material energy there may be some disturbance, but if one remains fixed in thinking of Krishna and chanting his holy name, that disturbance will gradually diminish, and one will start to feel peaceful and happy in any and every circumstance. This is Krishna consciousness. And that prepares one to leave the body, because at the time of death, there may be many disturbances coming by the body and the mind. So preparing ourselves now, when we're still in good sound physical condition, is the way to leave, to prepare oneself to leave the world in a in absorption at the lotus feet of Krishna, which is ultimately the goal of life. Okay, so uh, as Prabhupada said, uh, Krishna consciousness simply means practice. <laughs> You want to practice to what you want to become, simply practice that. But practicing remembering Krishna, that is the main principle by which all other practices become easy and natural. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you so much for the wonderful class. And you said with those magic words, practice, 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 practice. And we are trying to practice dhira, dhira. You know, I personally feel, Maharaj, so when the good days come or the bad days come or the good situation, the bad situation, they all come and go. Um, we know and we try to uh, relate and we, we try to put it into action. However, I mean, we don't react. However, in the mind, it's not internalized yet. 
But as you said, practice, probably that's the only way to actually internalize the dhiraj, the dhira inside our being, right? Yeah, but one should yeah. also understand that nothing can happen without the sanction of the Lord. Wonderful. So he, put, yeah. he, he, puts, he puts the material energy in, in working order, it works accordingly, and then it's going to work, but ultimately it's still working under his direction. Absolutely. So he allows things to happen and he wants things to happen. So in many cases, he is just allowing the, the material energy to work accordingly. But if we take shelter of him, then he is no, we're no longer affected by the changing of the material energy. Gradually, that consciousness develops through practice. Yes, Maharaj, practice, yes. Yeah. Thank you for your wonderful class. They are so pragmatic and, and so applicable. Thank you, Maharaj. Devotees, if you have any questions, please go ahead and ask Maharaj now that we have him here. Hare Krishna Maharaj, this is Sri Hari Radha Devi Dasi. I have this question, if you may allow me, can I ask you? Yes, yeah, so let me just mention one thing before we start the questions and answers. We're asking everybody to turn on their uh, videos during the question and answer session. Okay, as many people as possible. I know some of you are too shy to do that for whatever reason or indisposed but as many devotees as can please switch on your cameras <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaji Dandavat Parnam Jai Shila Prabhupada Jai Guru Ved. this is Shri Hare Krishna Devi Dasi what I wanted to ask you like you said that everything is Krishna's energy the material energy Everything is Krishna's energy, the material energy, and we are put into a certain situation through Krishna himself because it's Krishna's energy. And so uh, if that is the case, let's say that uh, a scenario that where two devotees are fighting like cats and dogs, and they know that uh, it's, it's a stupid fight, it should not happen or take place in the first place. Is that also one of the reasons where Krishna is involved and he's the one who... Uh, allowed his energy to invoke a fight into a devotee? Well, the material energy is going to work according to how it's supposed to work. I mean, each of the categories, goodness, passion, ignorance, have certain characteristics and qualities. So if we connect with the mode of passion, we're going to be uh, uh, working in a fruitive way to get the material results. And so when we work like that and other people are working and there's sometimes there's competition. When there's competition, there also can be, uh, uh, when we say dissension, and you see that all the time. So that means according to the association with the mode of passion, people will fight or the mode of ignorance even more so. Okay, thank you so much. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandavat Parnam. Yeah, the, the Krishna doesn't interfere with the material energy. He simply says, take shelter of me and you'll be free from that. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, Alicia, Hare Krishna. Uh, Maharaj, I have a question. In spite of hearing so much about rising early, the importance of waking up early in the morning, I sleep in the night, but I mean, you know, I just can't make it. Even at four, I feel, okay, let me sleep a bit more. It's, um, I mean, what to do? How do I overcome this, this you're habit? Saying, you're saying you want to get up a little earlier, but... Yeah, but this okay. bad habit, of just lying around and um well it, um, habit has to be replaced with habit <laughs> so um, if we're accustomed to getting up at a certain time that a custom is going to be there even though we may want to change so you have to see what you need to adjust to come to that platform it may not come immediately one, maybe say, take rest a little earlier. Two, 
do certain things at the time of before you take rest, will move, which will make it easier for you to rise when the time comes. There are, there are many practical things that you can do. But when devotees ask these questions, I say gradual, gradual. If you're accustomed to get up, getting up at six and you want to get up at four, you might have to go from 5.45 the first you know, couple of days, then down to 5.30 and then gradually, gradually, gradually. Because the, the body gets conditioned along with the mind. Of course, the mind directs the body, but both of them get conditioned to act in, in, a, in, a, in a way that, that the pattern that they're in. So if you want to change your pattern, you have to pray to Krishna, and at the same time, you have to adjust things on, on the practical level. And that's a practical thing, but at the same time, you can pray to Krishna. Thank you, uh, Good luck. <laughs> um, getting up at four o'clock is recommended. Uh, the latest we should possibly get up at is 4.30. Anything later than that is just too late. Mm. Because those early morning hours are actually very conducive to spiritual uh, practice. Chanting, reading, praying, worshipping are all more in, in the atmosphere is more inclined to support our spiritual activities at that time of the day. Now, Maharaj, by your blessings, Vaishnavas are like desire trees, so by your blessings, I'll overcome this anartha. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, that's a big, that's a big uh, point in our spiritual. When, you, when we get up early every day, you'll see your spiritual life will become more Stronger. Mm -hmm. Raja Bhakti Mataji, would you like to go ahead? Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble request. Hare Mo, Columbus, Kija. Yeah, Maharaj. <laughs> so happy to How's see you. It? How's Harry Das doing? <laughs> oh, he's wonderful, Maharaj. He's wonderful. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you so much for that priceless mercy from you. <laughs> I can't imagine. I still, I still could not digest the fact. <laughs> so happy. Well, it's it wasn't. I had nothing to do with it. He just wanted to come, so I was just a messenger. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Manas. Thank you so much, Manas. My question is, you know, like you are talking about taking shelter. Uh, so, you know, when difficult times comes, we always keep thinking of, you know, that problem it just doesn't go out of the mind. So how do we take shelter and what does it mean to take shelter in that difficult time? You want to push something out of your mind and it just keeps coming back? Yeah. Well, the thing is, the longer, the longer it stays in the mind, the harder it is to push it out. <laughs> and that's a fact. So um, when you notice it comes into the mind, immediately try to remove it before, because a thought is like a flower or like a plant that has a tendency to grow as yes. soon as it gets into the mind. So uh, you replace that with something spiritual, something Krishna consciousness, and then keep doing it until actually that becomes the thought. All you can do is push it out with something with something spiritual. You have to keep working on it. So, I mean, Prabhupada used to say, he said, uh, well, he said, every time I become disturbed, I chant loudly. Oh. So loud chanting actually helps to push out these things a lot faster than any other form of efforts we can make, chant loudly. I've had experiences like that where it worked for me. Yeah. 
try my Hello, Naveen, Haribo, how are you? Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Looking forward for association again. I'm looking forward to my next visit. Yes, Maharaj. <laughs> Haridas Sapkur is really wanted to see Maharaj. He's very happy. You want me to quickly show him, Maharaj? Yeah. Okay, one second. I haven't seen him since he's been in his new location. Yes, sir. Oh, beautiful. Um, so nice. And he's, he's dressed so nicely. <laughs> yeah. Very beautiful. <laughs> Thank you for the darshan. And you gave him his own altar. Wow, that's nice. Yes, Maharaj. I put Tulsi next to him. And so, yeah. <laughs> so this is this is our Japa station here. So we sit here and chant all the time. Yeah. Tulsi and Haridas Thakur, maybe the prostitute will come in, in that setting. You know? <laughs> and she'll try and... to tempt out Haridas. <laughs> Thank you so much, Maras. <laughs> well, I'm I'm happy you're happy. Thank you, Maras. <laughs> Indulekha Mataji, would you like to go ahead, please? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Your Holiness. Thank you for a wonderful class, Maharaj. Uh, so, Maharaj, today you were explaining about how uh, in a way like we should be steady sober dhira and also such a person would also be compassionate so I, I was just wondering when we start understanding how things are in the uh, real world actually that you know we are not this body we are the soul all of that and we should be steady in all situations uh, 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 sort of, we kind of lose that sense of compassion. So, how do we become compassionate devotees, Maharaj? Could you please help with that? Yeah, that's um, that's a good question. Yeah, you you hit on a very uh, subtle point, which is important. That we might, in our dira, we might be a little bit less compassionate to everybody else's suffering or the situations they find themselves in. The devotee is compassionate as, as a principle and not as something that comes and goes. So if a devotee can relieve the suffering of others, they consider that an opportunity to do service. So although they still may be practicing dira for themselves, they want to help others also come to that platform by showing the compassion needed to help, to, help, to help bring people out of their difficult situations. And that means giving them Krishna consciousness accordingly. So, uh, yeah, it, it shouldn't cause one to be hard-hearted, to be dear, or, or intolerant of another's suffering. We should be intolerant of another's suffering, intolerant of our own difficulties. Naramuni, Prahlad Maharaj, they all practice that. When uh, Prahlad Maharaj was trying to be killed by the, the Brahmins, they were, these were they, these tantric Brahmanas. It's not mentioned in the Bhagavatam, it's mentioned in another scripture where these uh, Harani Kashi who had these Brahmanas who could put evil spells on people and kill them. Um, they tried it on Prahlad, but Prahlad was unaffected by it because of his, his power of spiritual absorption into Krishna. But one of the features that if you try to kill someone with mantras, and it can be done, you can kill people with mantras. And the demons, some demons, they know how to do that. 
then if that mantra doesn't work on the victim, the effects of the mantra come back to the person who delivers it. So these mantras were coming back on these brahmanas and they were, they were dying. And now Prahlad Maharaj is there and they're starting to pray to Prahlad Maharaj, please save us. <laughs> they tried to kill him, but the mantras came back and was killing them. And now they're praying to Prahlad to save him. And Prahlad did. He had the power to uh, redo, uh, to nullify the effects of the mantras that they gave. So he wasn't like you know, insensitive to their suffering. Haridas Thakur was not insensitive to the sufferings of others. He was always trying to leave, relieve that, but he was not disturbed when difficulties came upon him. So that's a devotee. So uh, that, again, has to be a feature of devotional service, that a devotee is by nature kind-hearted. Kind-hearted means he doesn't want to see anyone suffer. And if he can relieve the suffering, then he considers that an opportunity to serve. Mm -hmm. We have to practice that along with practicing becoming tolerant for ourselves. I think that's more natural to be compassionate towards others. It's more difficult to be uh, unaffected by what happens to us. <laughs> but the nature of devotee is, yeah, they, they rejoice in another person's happiness in Krishna consciousness and they feel Eva says even Krishna feels sad when he sees the living entities in the material world are suffering because they don't know that their real happiness is to be with him, to serve him, to remember him. So he feels a kind of sadness, but that sadness doesn't affect his happiness. It's just a feature of his compassionate nature. Wonderful. And so you get, yeah, it doesn't have to be contrary. <laughs> yes, Maran, so many things to learn uh, in this process. So thank you so much, Maharaj. What a wonderful answer. Hare Krishna. Hare Thank you. Hare Krishna. We have Antaranga Mataji, if you would like to pose your question. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance. Thank you for the wonderful class. Um, my question was that uh, when we are in some problems, my tendency is normally to go and stand in front of the deities and ask them for help. So, and then uh, I feel that I am like disturbing them continuously that whenever I go and stand in front of Kishore Kishori, I'm just asking for help. So. Is that okay to ask for help from the deities? Yeah, you should. <laughs> <laughs> but we shouldn't bother them with the little things that we can solve ourselves. If, unless unless you, you should see what, well, I'm in a difficult situation. The little things we can always just remember Krishna and then pray to Krishna, my dear Lord, you know, help me to understand this situation. But when we get into a situation where it becomes difficult, then prayer is natural. Mm. So it's not an offense and it, I'm not disturbing them. Mm. I don't think so. That's what Krishna is for. He likes when devotees take shelter and depend on him. But if you're... If you're <laughs> If you're in a material situation where the outcome is material in either case, then that may not be necessary. In other words, the material situation didn't work out according to your plan. And now you're asking Krishna to solve the material situation for you. <laughs> so, but if it comes to taking shelter, then that's, then that's what we do. 
Okay, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Hare I'll give you an example of the material situation. Uh, this was ha this happened in London. This was communicated to me. One lady, she came before the deities in you know, Radha Gokulananda in Bhakti Vedanta Manor in London. And she was praying for her son to have good marks in all his graves. <laughs> so she said, My dear Lord, you know, my son is going to he's going to middle school and he has 10 subjects and uh, Please give him A's in all 10 subjects. <laughs> so uh, then she made her prayer. And then the boy at the end of the semester, he got A's in nine subjects, not 10. And she went back and she complained to the Lord that he missed out by only giving nine instead of 10. <laughs> So you don't want to do anything like that. <laughs> when I heard that story, I don't know whether to laugh or just become disgusted. <laughs> it was just really funny. <laughs> but people will go before the deities for everything, you know, to solve, you know, the most insignificant situation, which has nothing to do with spiritual life. <laughs> So yeah, I think you be you can be able to you should be able to distinguish is this is this one can I solve myself or do I have to uh, go before the Lord and make sincere prayers for this one? Yeah. Okay, Maharaj. Thank you. That was helpful. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Thank you. It's a nice sometimes, name, right? Yeah. Sometimes we feel that we cannot solve anything by ourselves, no? I'm just uh, trying to ask like a but then Krishna up. Krishna says, I am the intelligence of the intelligent. So remember yeah. Krishna. Yes. yes. That is the way to go through life by remembering Krishna. And not just remember Krishna when we need him, but always. Thank you to all the devotees for such awesome questions and thank you to Maharaj. Any last minute questions? We can end the call then. Okay. Thank you. That was this is a nice section of the Bible time. It's very interesting. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you for the wonderful class and thank you for the beautiful answers. Nice to see Haridas talk. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah. It's an it's so an happy he's in USA. <laughs> yeah, he's an expansion of my deity. <laughs> <laughs> when he went, he went to some people's houses. They said, "Oh, you're leaving, and you're taking Harry Das with you." How can we do? How can we can? We don't care if you leave, but leave Hari does. <laughs> <laughs> so I couldn't do that. So I had to do something. <laughs> but these devotees served Hari Das so nicely when I was at their place. This happened to two people. Uh, Preeti also. Uh, actually, Prem Prem Fishuri, my other. And both of them were so much in anxiety that Haridas was leaving. That all I could think of is Haridas wanted to go back there, so he's attracted by devotion. <laughs> and if you chant in front of Haridas Thakur, your japa, you can expect that your japa will be much more 
please me. Wow. Raja Bhakti can keep a diary of her experiences of what's happening every day in her job. <laughs> That's why I was, definitely there is a, I can literally see the difference in my Jaffa. It's it's so nice and blissful to sit next to Haridas Thakur and Tulsi Maharani and chant in the morning. So it's it's so nice, Maharaj. It's so nice. Now devotees, when they come, usually when they come to my home, they walk around and chant like that. Now no, nobody wants to leave the temple room. Everybody wants to sit there and chant. <laughs> I have to, I have to tell. Them, okay, you sit first, then you sit next. <laughs> next like your family looks like your family is getting bigger. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my it is so so nice. Can you post the picture? Can you post the picture on this group? Yes, oh. Hare Krishna Maharaj, that was uh, going to be my request. Maharaj, can you please post a picture of your Haridas Thakur also, if possible? And uh, Raja Bhakti Mataji, please post a picture of yours too. Yeah, sure. um, yeah. Oh, a picture. Okay, yeah. So I'll send a picture. I'll send a picture to uh, to Sham Shamagori, and then she can post it in the group. Yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay. Thank you. All right. Now uh, we'll see you again in two weeks. So. Seems like two weeks is so far away. But... For us too, Maharaj. Uh, out of all the groups that I speak to, you have the biggest numbers. So many devotees. Oh, there's, there's uh, Pariksha. Yeah. Oh my God. Pariksha. Hello. Hello, Mark. How are you? Give, okay, give us some uh, give us some instructions. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us something transcendental. Yeah. They have so much devotion, Maharaj, I can see. Yeah. Parikshit is a scholar. He 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 reads Bhagavatam and gives classes on the Bhagavatam verses. Wow. You can actually, you can sign him up for one of your classes, you know, because he's... Wow. He's only 10 years old, but he's he's more like 35 years old. Wow. More like 10. Oh. <laughs> Richard, what, are you, what are you learning now? Which particular verses are you studying? Uh... Second canto, Second canto now. Good, good. He, he actually read the, all the translations and everything for all 12 cantos. Maras. Now he's going back and read the purports in detail. So now he's in second canto reading the purports. Yes. I am um, second canto, first chapter, verse number five. Do you remember that verse? Well, <laughs> I, I, Okay. Sukadev Goswami speaks about that by hearing, chanting, and remembering the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one people will become free from all fear. It's the essence of the verse. Shravanam Kirtanam Samarnam. A very powerful verse. 215. Yeah. That's fine. I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you, Okay, good, good. Along with the, the, the explanations, right? Yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Nice to see you, Pariksha. I look forward to coming and uh, again being a part of the family. <laughs> it's a pleasure, Mara. We'll be waiting for you. And if you invite. Uh, if you invite, uh, uh, Kamagiri over, then yes, I'll be there, be there even faster. <laughs> <laughs>
Yes, we we still laugh about those moments, Maras. Yesterday, Krishnagi Saki came for the breakfast. We were sitting and talking about you and the moments that we had <laughs> when you were here. Yeah, Kama Gary is an amazing. She's when I told Radhana Swami that I was with Kama Gary, he's he was so overwhelmed just hearing her name. He was just so amazed. He was so happy. To hear about her, just reminding him of Kamagiri gives him great happiness. Yes, <laughs> Gurudev has very special affection for her. Yeah. Thank you, Aras. Thank you. Thank you, all of the devotees who came today, my obeisances to each and every one of you. You are plugged into a very, very highly developed program of. Krishna consciousness discussions. It's been going on for years and years and years since 2009. It continues to develop nicely. So we want to thank Shamagori and her whole family for working so hard to keep this program going so nicely. Haribo. So many souls have been benefited, including me. Okay, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.